Hello, boys and girls. I'm Lucinda Florio. Did you know that the most famous inventor in American history lived in New Jersey? Thomas Alva Edison, inventor of the phonograph, the electric light, and the motion picture camera, lived and worked here in New Jersey. Today, on Around and About New Jersey, we're going to visit the Edison National Historic Site in West Orange. It's the laboratory where Mr. Edison spent much of his time working on his inventions. So many inventions came out of this lab that it's been called an invention factory. As you watch, keep in mind these important points. Thomas Edison did not work alone. He was the leader of a team. Edison wanted all of his inventions to make a profit. And most importantly, many of these inventions have changed the way that we live, work, and play. I hope you enjoy Thomas Edison's Invention Factory. Welcome to Thomas Edison's laboratory. If you think it looks more like a factory than a science lab, you're not too far off. That's what the inventor built, an invention factory. Just as there are factories that produce cars or washing machines, Edison's factory produced inventions. And just as every factory needs workers, Edison's lab had many people helping him. This is how he produced more than a thousand inventions during his lifetime, more than any person before or since. So let's punch the Invention Factory time clock and learn more about the amazing Thomas Edison as we go around and about New Jersey. Today on Around and About New Jersey, we're going to West Orange in Essex County, home of the Thomas Edison National Historic Site. Good morning. Welcome to the Edison National Historic Site. My name's Ben. I'll be your tour guide, and I'll be taking you through the laboratories where Thomas Edison worked the last 44 years of his life. Edison worked here from 1887 until he died in 1931. Now, when Edison opened this laboratory in 1887, it was the best laboratory in the United States, maybe the best laboratory in the world. Anything he needed to do to come up with one of these new amazing Edison inventions, he could do right here within this laboratory. Okay, you all set? Yes. Okay, why don't we begin the tour? Like other Edison inventions, this invention factory didn't just happen. Thomas Edison perfected the idea over years of inventing. As a boy in Ohio, Edison was interested in the telegraph, a device that carried messages over electrical wires by using a code of dots and dashes. Edison became a telegraph operator at 16, and his first inventions were improvements in the telegraph. Tom Edison moved east. In Menlo Park, New Jersey, he built a laboratory where he and his team of inventors could work. People called the lab Thomas Edison's Invention Factory. At Menlo Park, Edison developed two of his most important inventions, the phonograph and the electric light. Edison used the profits from these inventions to build a second invention factory, the laboratory in West Orange. What do you suppose the first thing Thomas Edison has to have to make an invention is? What does he need first? Idea. What do you suppose Edison would do next? Something that you folks might have done in school already, something you might do at a library. Research. Research, yes, exactly right. You have to do research. And I have proof that Edison did research. This is a picture of Thomas Edison taken when he was 81 years old. He's still doing research. Now, if you guys had to do research, you might go to the town library. But that doesn't always have what you want, and sometimes it's closed, right? Well, Edison used to work all times, day and night. He used to work sometimes until 3 o'clock in the morning. 
because that Edison wanted to have his own library that would never close. And you're sitting in Edison's library. It's three stories tall. It had 10,000 books in it. Anything Edison needed to research, anything he wanted to find out, he could find out with the books that are in this library. So Edison would get an idea, and then he would do a research. Now what do you suppose he's going to do? Outline. Right, do an outline. So we get down on paper what the invention's going to do, how's it going to work, Who's going to buy it? What's it going to be made of? Just things like that. Sort of get that all written down on paper. It is sort of a rough draft. And there's something else you want to do, along with those notes, along with that outline. A sketch. You might say that Thomas Edison thought in pictures. In trying to make an invention work, he drew many pictures of it. These drawings also helped Edison's workers build a model of the invention. Very good, very good. Another part of inventing was trial and error. Try something out, and if it doesn't work, try something else. Edison needed many different kinds of materials. His team gathered materials from all over the world and kept them in a stock room at the lab. This way, he could test many different materials for a particular invention. Take the electric light. It was known that light could be produced with an electric current passing through something called a filament, and that the filament would not burn up if it were placed in a vacuum, which is a space with no air. Edison invented a glass bulb with a vacuum inside, but he needed the right material to make a filament that wouldn't burn away. Edison and his staff tested thousands of materials, eventually finding carbonized Japanese bamboo worked best. Okay, you're in Thomas Edison's experimental machine shop. This is where he actually would have put his new inventions together. Why do you suppose Edison wants to have a working model of the invention? What's he want to do with it? Test it. Yes, he wants to test it. He'd come in here, he'd have a model of the invention made, he'd test it, and he'd look at it, see if it really worked, and see if he could improve it. Nesson has this new invention. There's something he needs to get after he makes the invention. A certain kind of paper you get down in Washington. A patent? Yes, he needs to get a patent. Can anyone tell me what a patent is? Yes? Something that shows that if you invent something that no one else can invent it. It's a legal document that they get, give you at the patent office in Washington. It says, you invented this, you're, it's an original idea, you thought of it, you made it, and you are the only one allowed to make that invention. Edison wanted all his inventions to make a profit. Once an invention was patented, the last step was to sell it to the public. We're in the phonograph room of the Edison Laboratory. We're very fortunate today to have with us Charlie Hummel, local phonograph expert, who has brought with him today his own Edison model 1878 tinfoil phonograph. He's going to show that, us how that works today. How are you doing today? Hi. Okay, what we're going to do today is demonstrate Edison's very first tinfoil. I'm going to have to shout into this mouthpiece with this megaphone or speaking horn and where we try to produce my voice. So as I place the horn on this and shout into this horn, I'll turn this wheel, moving the mandrel. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. By turning the tinfoil machine back to the beginning where we started, and using the same stylus that we used to record, we can play the voice back. You have to put yourself back in 1877. Never before has a human voice ever been recorded and then played back. People gathered around this phonograph, they thought, Mr. Edison, maybe it was a ventriloquist, it wouldn't work. But as he turned the tinfoil, here's what they heard. Actually, that was the first words ever recorded, then played back. I have on my right here a later Edison improved phonograph, and you'll be able to hear how much better it sounds. One problem with this phonograph that Charlie just demonstrated is the foil isn't really a good recording surface. So Edison researched it and eventually began using wax to record on. He made cylinders made of wax. But wax melts when it gets hot. It breaks very easily. So later on, Edison used plastic cylinders. 
could record on it, it sounded very clear, and it did not break very easily. And along with that, Edison was able to make this improved machine over on my right. And you just slide the record on, just wind up the machine, the cylinder's turning, and you lower the needle. By recording entertainers of the day, Edison made the phonograph an invention that many people would want to buy. In 1888, Edison wrote that he was working on an invention that would do for the eye what the phonograph did for the ear. It was already known that looking at a rapid sequence of still pictures created the illusion of motion. Thomas Edison invented a camera that could take many still photographs at a rapid pace. Edison began making movies. What's that? It's the Black Mariah. Thomas Edison's first movie studio, built about 1893. The early film that Thomas Edison used needed a lot of sunlight to expose it, so you either had to film outdoors or somehow get sunlight in the studio. That is why the Black Mariah was built, to get sunlight in the studio. The right-hand half of the roof was built like a trap door. It could be cranked open, would swing open, and then would let the sunlight come through the roof, light up the building inside. Then the entire building was made so it would rotate in a full circle. As the sun moved during the day, periodically you could stop filming, just get out, push the building around to follow the sun, maximize your sunlight. Once again, Edison made sure that his invention would make a profit. He made machines called kinetoscopes that showed the movies and put them in arcades, like today's video arcades. Imagine what life was like before Thomas Edison's inventions. If you wanted to read a book at night, you'd need a candle or oil lamp for light. Since there were no movies or cassettes or CDs, people had to rely on themselves more for entertainment. If your street had street lamps, they were gas lights, which had to be lit by hand and could explode. I'd like to ask you a question. I'd like you to tell me what you think was Thomas Edison's most important invention. Oh, me. Oh, you, you, what do you think? The what? The phonograph. The phonograph, why? Because it's entertaining. The light bulb, because if we didn't have the light bulb, everything would be dark. Yeah. I think it was the phonograph, because if we didn't have the phonograph, we wouldn't have CDs or tapes or anything. Motion pictures, because without that, no one would be able to get be on TV or anything. Thomas Edison was called the Wizard of Menlo Park. But there was nothing magical about what he did. He had a team of workers who helped him invent things. They also manufactured and sold them to the public. And these inventions changed millions of people's lives, including ours. Thomas Edison's invention factory produced many more inventions than just the ones we've seen today. Our visit to his West Orange lab showed us how he worked. Without Thomas Edison, and his inventions, our lives would be very different.